So I'm COVID cough. This Sorry. This meeting is being recorded. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Serenity Cards and Coaching. My name is Leela Mikey. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and this is my technique class today, and I'm super excited to share coloring with blends, getting ready for Christmas. I'm so excited. So um, this is the card we're going to color today, and it's a little bit of um, a stepped-up coloring technique, so I'm going to show you how to do a little bit of a stepped-up coloring technique and then this paper, I love this paper, is the St. Nick. It's an online exclusive, and so this is the pattern. It's so sweet. Like, there's your hot chocolate with that on the back, and then your sweet little stockings, and it matches the St. Nick stamps, which I'll show in a future video I don't have right here. And then there's some holly with a beautiful, elegant design. The stamps and dies, the dies actually have a fireplace. The dies have little stockings. I mean, you're gonna see more to come for sure. Um, little mailing, look how sweet that is. I mean, I love this paper and I will tell you, it is while supplies last. So it is not in the mini catalog. It's an online exclusive. It's while supplies last. So that is the um, paper we're working with today and we're using the hot chocolate pattern. Um, and I'll show you this stamp set. And wouldn't this just look cute with like a little hot chocolate packet and just a sweet little gift for Christmas, right? So more to come on the hot chocolate packet. I'm going to be doing a 12 weeks of Christmas series and I've got a fun little packet made. But today we're um, going to put it on a tag and put it on a card. And the stamp set we're using is called Gift of Giving. Big, big shout out to Cindy on my team who brought this to my attention. I mean, I saw it and I loved it. I'm just a sucker for Santa Claus anyway. But then she said she got it and I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to. So I'm so delighted that I did. So um, we've got gifts from Santa Claus. We've got have a cup of cheer. We've got to you. And this, I'm just gonna show you how to color today. Um, but I also offer a kit to go along with it and the three cards that I make with all of these are going to be available to you in a kit. So um, if you want to get on my mailing list to learn more about that, you can, but we're going to color one of the cards today. And by the way, you can find me at um, leelamikey.com. And so this is the card we're going to make today. The ingredients are, we've got our uh, thick white cardstock base. We've got our designer series paper at three and a quarter by five and a half. Now that's the pattern on the back. So that's why I made the same pattern of a tag. It just works really, really well together. So that's three and a quarter by five and a half. And then I've got two tags with the tailored tags designer series. Uh, I'm sorry, tailored tags dies. I think this is the second size down. Um, and I've uh, made a couple, I've already die cut those. We've got stylish sha shapes circle. And this I think is the second size down of the circle. Um, with the tags, I don't always do it, but I think it's a really nice polished look when you put the little, um, I don't know what it's called, the little grommet holder. Now I realized I think I cut the wrong die cut. There's two different tags, but I thought it looked fine. So we're gonna use that one. And then I've got this um, ribbon and it comes um, together real red and garden green. So that's just great for Christmas. I've got some uh, leftover twine probably from Paper Pumpkin, but you can use any twine. I'm just, I had a little bit of left of red and white, so I'm using that. We're gonna use Memento ink and I'll do the colors as we go along. So I'm stamping on basic white with memento and i've got uh, um, a window sheet underneath i was watching someone else you guys when i do my technique class i always 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 study others and i learned that if you color with blends and you've got the um, window sheet underneath it kind of protects the tip a little bit and it doesn't soak all the way through. It stays in the paper itself. So um, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. So I'm putting my stamp on my block. This is the cheer. And I'm gonna go ahead and stamp in. 
Pinto ink. Now, um, this is often the way that I ink up my um, stamp. I do it upside down often. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get it right in the middle of the camera right there. And there we go. That little mark right there is going to be okay because I'm, um, I'm going to fussy cut it. I do have an extra little line at the bottom, so I'm just going to take a moment. You know what? I wonder if stamping with the window sheet underneath makes a difference. So I'm going to take that out while I stamp. And, and I'm going to fussy cut it, so um, it's going to be fine if there's any little anything. So that's it for the stamping. And we'll go ahead and we'll get to the coloring. Now, I'm going to tell you the colors that I'm using. The colors that I'm using are the colors in the designer series paper. Always love to do that. Um, and I pulled in a few extras. So uh, I also, with my technique class, I'll have a PDF, but I'll just tell you what I've got. I've got light pool party, color lifter, light real red, light basic black, old olive light and dark, granny apple green light. I've got light mossy meadow, crumb cake, SU100, and light pecan pie. I'm also gonna use the watercolor pencils at the end with just a little bit of technique. So um, so the pool party, I'm just gonna use on the circle and I'm using the, um, the wider end and I'm just kind of giving like just a little kind of watercolory look in the background. It's gonna dry lighter than that, and it's just gonna be in the background. You're not even gonna see it at all. So here, like it's just a light touch. You're not even, it's just a light touch. You're just not even gonna see it. So now we'll go ahead and get to the coloring. And, <coughs> excuse me, I've got a little cough right now. I'm going to start with the cup first. So, and actually let me, um, <laughs> Let me make sure I don't do the wrong cup. So I'll go ahead and cut this guy out of the way so that I don't get tempted to do the wrong cup. And uh, I hope that window isn't gonna be too shiny. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the light mossy meadow. I don't, the only dark color I'm using out of all of these is the old olive. So I'm taking the light mossy meadow. Now my tip's getting a little bit loved. So I'm going to go to the other end. Um, oh my gosh, what has happened? So here, ha, I could totally do a bloopers. Um, oh my gosh, I really can't get it. Hold on. All right, I got it. So if that happens, just get it back in. So I'm going to take my light mossy meadow and I'm going around the edge and I'm just drawing a line. Now the cool thing about alcohol ink is that it blends. So you know how when we use colored pencils or crayons, um, like you can see the line. The cool thing about using alcohol ink is it really is, it's alcohol. So it really just, it blends and it runs. And so when I, and that's why they're called blends. When I go to add more colors, you're not gonna see this straight line. So I've gone around just to get my border. I'm also gonna do the handle. Like this. So I've gone around just to get my border. Now I'm going to, and it, in a perfect world, I would have some, my brush wouldn't be um, so, I, I've used it a lot. So in a perfect world, I'd kind of use the brush end. But what I'm doing is I'm now coming in from the side and I'm doing kind of a sideways brush. And don't worry, I'm going right over the black ink, but it's perfectly fine. You can see it come right through. You do want to make sure your memento ink is um, good and inked up, right? Whenever we use an ink pad. Now, I'm right-handed, so many times I move my image around so that I can get the brush technique that I want comfortably rather than kind of distorting myself. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to kind of come up a little bit from the bottom 
and from the top. And now here's where some magic is going to happen. So we've got that and that's a nice color and that's fine. By the way, I'm not doing the inside of the cup there. The inside of the cup, I'm going to come in with a little bit of black later. So now I'm going to come in with Old Olive Dark. I'm pretty sure that's true. Let me take a look that that's true. Yeah, I'm going to come in with Old Olive Dark. See, when you use the brush end, it's a little nicer. It just don't have to do as many strokes. Now I am, you can see a little bit of the lines. Maybe you can't, I can, but um, I am going to come in and blend them all together. All right, so now I've done that. Now I'm going to come in with Old Olive Light and I'm going to color the middle in. And then I'm really going to start to marry stuff together. So I'm going all the way across. And I'm really pulling all these colors together. That's really cool. Is it? Yeah, it looks really pretty. Awesome. Oh, Melody's I'm here. Melody. Is that watercolor paper? I'm not yeah, sure if I heard. This is regular basic white paper. Okay. It's the blends that do it. So I'm going to pull it up so you can see it. Now, if you look really closely, you might be able to say, oh, I can see some things. But honestly, like you're not going to do that. You're just going to look at it and you're going to see that there's variation in it, right? So, but close up, that's what it looks like. If I want to, and I will, I'll come back in one more time with the granny apple green and just kind of marry it all together one more time. Sometimes I um, fidget and fuss quite a bit. I wanna make sure I have my light. Yeah, it's light. Oh, I'm sorry, it's light old olive I'm working with. So I'm just gonna come in one more time and I, now that I've got my color down, I'm kind of going in the shape of the mug so that if you do see any lines, it's like it's a curve of a mug. So there we go. I feel really good about that. So that's it. I'm done with that guy. Now, I love pool party. I love it. I use it in all different kinds of places. I mean, you already saw I put it in the back of the circle right there, right? Which is already light. It's getting way lighter, right? You're, I mean, you're not even going to be able to see it when I do it. So I've used Pool Party on the marshmallows. And Stampin' Up! lets us know where the shading is. So I'm really grateful about that because they always put like little shading lines in. So we can just follow Stampin' Up!'s lines because they're the artists and they put them in there for us. So I'm just going through with pool party and just adding a little bit of color. I'll show you what it looks like after it's had a chance to dry a little bit. I bet you didn't even notice it the first time that you were looking at it, right? Like you didn't even notice there were little colors, but at the same time, it gave it just enough light and interest. Now you could maybe, I mean, I'm doing like kind of warmer color, wait, no, cooler. I don't know. I'm doing greens because this has lots of greens in it. If I was working with a different paper, maybe I would do balmy blue or a little bit of a gray or whatever, but because I'm working with greens here, um, I'm using the pool party. So that's it. That's just as simple as that is for that guy. While I have the pool party out, I'm going to color in the middle of the handle because I know when I put it on the um, on here, like I want it to look like um, I mean, you can see the pool party in the back, so I want it to, I don't want it to be just like white. And I am certainly not fussy cutting inside of that handle. All right. Now let's do the, let's do the candy cane. So the candy cane, I'm using light real red, and I'm definitely using the narrow end. And I'm going to pull it closer to me so I can see it. 
and I guarantee you there's a high probability you might go out of the lines on this guy. And so if you do, I'll show you how to fix it. Or let me say there's a high probability I'll go out of the lines. Okay, so see, I just did it. All right. Yeah, got a little bit harder in there. You just did it as an example. That's you right. You just wanted to That's demonstrate. right. For demonstration purposes only. So this is a color lifter. It literally lifts color. It does not erase. It lifts color. So what I'm going to do is, if you can see, I made a boo-boo like on the second, um, the second lineup. So I'm just going to come in and I'm going to go next to the line and I'm just going to lift the color. And then I think I did it oh. over here too. So I'm going to lift the color. It looks perfect so to me. Let's take a look. I know I'm really, really, really um, kind of a perfectionist about, about my blending. Um, so I want to show you though what it looks like to do color lifting because it's kind of cool. I'm going to come over here and show you a dark color. So when you use the color lifter, it literally lifts color. So it's not erasing it, it's lifting color. So it's a great way to go in and get some emphasis and get some highlights, etc. But um, anyway, so now our, I'll probably come in and fuss with the candy cane a little bit more because um, I feel like I can see some more red lines, but I won't take you on that journey with me. Okay, so that was the candy cane. And by the way, when I'm done with it, I'm going to put Wink of Stella on it. So I don't know if you could see it here, but there's a little bit of glitz on the candy cane over here. So a little bit. So super fun. So that's Wink of Stella. If that's not a part of your life, I'm just going to um encourage you to think about making it a part of your life because it's so fun to add a little bit of glitz and glam valerie just did it for the first time and it's very exciting so i'm coloring the little holly berries in light real red and i'm leaving just a white a tiny white little space open by each of them and i didn't really do it in any set pattern i often do it like near the top but i just put a tiny little white if i really wanted to give some um depth and texture and interest sometimes i'll come in with a different color this is cherry cobbler and because they're so little i'll just do like a light dot in each one nobody can see it at all but it just gives that much little more depth. So um, this is kind of, I guess I would say an advanced class in blends. You don't have to, you can absolutely very simply, like I was doing this one earlier, you can very simply just color. Like you don't have to do all the blending, you just can just color and move on to the next, right? So this is kind of a more advanced. Oh, I'm glad I'm showing you this though. Here's an example of color lifting where I wanted to do some color lifting between the two boxes. And what happened was I got too far into the boxes. So now I've got to come back and color each of those different blues once I get inside the box. So you want to watch out for that when you're color lifting too. It's going to lift color wherever the pen touches it. But anyway, this is a little bit more advanced um, to show um, blends in their true form. <coughs> I'm using the light basic black. Now, who knew that there could be a light and a dark basic black, but there is. And so um, I feel like dark basic black is really, really dark. So we're just gonna kinda give a little bit of a shadow right there. And that's all we need for that. Now we're gonna do the cookie. And the cookie, I played with a bunch of colors. So let's see if I remember what I did. I started with a light crumb cake. Where did that go? Uh, uh, uh. Where did he go? I really want the light. 
well, you know what? I ended up with pecan pie anyway, but um, yeah, let's do pecan pie. I'm going to do the light pecan pie. I think that I did crumb cake, and then I decided pecan pie was like more of a, I don't know, just more of a cookie I would want to eat. So I'm just going in. I guess I could color in the chips because I'm going to color over them anyway, but I'm just carefully going around them. And now I want a chocolate chip cookie. Huh? My daughter made some last night. <laughs> Yummy. Yummy. Do you guys get to do that for homeschooling? Like, does that count as a um, activity? Um, I could, but these actually, my sister made them and had them shaped like individual cookies. So all she had to do was put it on a pan and put it in the oven. She awesome. was so excited when she brought her that. Good girl. Nice aunt present. But yeah, we could do cooking as a homeschool. That's cool. Okay. So these are chocolate chips, and this one I'm doing SU700. I don't know if you know it, but we've got all these skin tones. And so this is, um, we've got like light, medium, and dark skin tones. So this is in the skin tone line, but I think it makes a great, um, it just makes a great brown. So now I'm coming in and I'm just kind of doing a final sweep over the whole cookie to pull it all together and that's that guy. So the final thing we have to do is the leaves. So I'll pull this little, oh, I know I'm gonna do another little touch too, but that looks like a yummy cookie, huh? So the final thing we're gonna do is the leaves and I'm using light granny apple green for the leaves. Gosh, I'm just, I can tell I'm not feeling strong right now. I can't even open the, oh my gosh. I can't even open it. Just give me a minute. I got to get it open. All righty. So I like to come in and just kind of give the base a light granny apple green everywhere. I love granny apple green. Probably like pool party, probably use it on most of the cards that I use. It's just a great way to lighten things up a bit and give some variety and give some interest. So that's the granny apple green, but now I'm going to come back in and add a little more depth to those leaves. So I feel like I'm going to use a little bit of the light mossy meadow. And there's no way that I'm going to like get so precise that I get into the like there's leaf lines. There's no way I'm going to get so precise that I'm coloring in the leaf lines. Maybe Someone with really great eyesight could do that, but I don't think we need to do that. I think leaves kind of have a lot of variation anyway. So there we go. I feel like that's pretty good. I'm gonna sweep back through, I think with light old olive. And this is really, I don't know that there's a science to it. It's just really, it's nice to have a variety of colors and then just kind of play. But I always like to come in after I've used a few different colors and do like a final kind of um, once over the whole thing so it pulls all the colors together. Now, you might have seen this uh, white pencil sitting here. I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna go along the lid of the cup with my freshly sharpened white pencil. So I'm just gonna go along the lid of the cup and I'm going to go along this side because when you look at cups, the light kind of shines right there because that's an edge and that's where it catches it. And so, you guys, that's it. That's our, that's our colored cup of cheer. Looks great. 
That's really cute. Cute. Will you make awesome. Costello the marshmallows? I thought about it, and then I thought, well, and the I don't candy cane. I, I I would want to receive dry marshmallow. Well, I guess in a cup they'd be moist. I really thought about it, and I'm like, well, then they'd be wet and gooey. So. <laughs> yeah, they're usually they're usually kind of matte, huh? Yeah, I went back and forth on it. So I ended up, and then I decided, like, if I put this on a packet anyway, and I put the candy cane in a packet, I want the candy cane to be the shiny thing. So, I, but you absolutely could. You could put it on the berries. You could put them anywhere. I mean, that's the fun thing about stamping. You can just bring it to life any which way. So I'll show you a few more things about putting this card together. Um, of course, we fussy cut the cup, and then let me just show you the rest of the things. So, I told you this is three and a quarter by five and a half. Now, where did I get this sketch? I'm going to tell you where I, I call it a sketch when it's like you're following kind of a layout. So, um, and I'll probably, I hope to do the other two cards for the kit. I hope to do the same thing where I'm kind of following the same outline, but these guys are a little bit bigger and differently shaped. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do that, but this is a great shape. Um, and so I got this, there's a, there's a group on Facebook called Casing Tuesday, C-A-S-E hyphen I-N-G, I think, Casing Tuesday. And um, what they do is they case the catalog, they copy the catalog. And so this week, that was the sketch. And gosh, where was it? It wasn't these guys. Which design was it? If I if I can flip through really quick, maybe I'll find it. But um, but the design had um, it had the piece of paper right there. Oh, gosh, I forgot to add let me come in quick and add the ribbon because I think it makes all the difference. So I've got my bow and I've got my ribbon. Can I do it? I'm going to try, you guys. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. You know, I actually do this a lot. All right. I'm going to take a couple pieces of tape. I do this a lot. So hopefully, um, somebody I'm, showed me how to use the, the take your pick tool with that oh, flat that? piece to, to take glue take. apart. That's cool. Works pretty good, but oh, you did it fine. Cool. All right. So you can usually tell how it feels. Sometimes it's like, yeah, that's not going to happen. All right. But this looks like it's going to be okay. So awesome. All right. I'm going to glue it down again. That was good for demo again, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm teaching all kinds of things. Okay, so let me just hold that down. And if anybody has the mini catalog and can find the sketch, I'm trying to think, what did they have on it? Oh, you know what? I bet I have it on my phone. I could go find it. But, um, but literally, this is something, um, a design out of the catalog. All right, so, so I've got that. And I think that's really cute. And I'm going to add my bow eventually. And now I've got my tag elements. So let's get these assembled. So I'm going to take a little bit of glue, tiny little bit of glue. And well, that's another demonstration thing. When your glue is getting very, very light, I just kind of like, um, I don't know, like a ketchup bottle, get it to the tip so I can get all my life out of it. So I'm putting my little grommet holder, I don't know, tab reinforcement, my tab reinforcer. I'm putting that right there. And then I'm gonna put these two together and I'm gonna lay it out a little bit just so that I get all the placement that I like. Um, and I went back and forth. I put the cup on sideways. And then it was like too crooked and anyway, so I'm going to try to have the tag straight and the circle straight like that. And then I'll fussy cut this guy. So I'll give you some fussy cutting tips. I'm going to leave a little bit of an edge 
I use my snips, love my snips. Sometimes I just, um, so that it's comfortable in my hand, I get rid of every excess immediately so that I'm just working from this. And then I, um, I move the paper, not the scissors. So I'm holding the scissors in the same place and I'm moving the paper. And again, I'm gonna come in and do like an even closer outline. There's a bit of iteration with this, but um, if I move the paper, I don't know, it's just what I learned. It's kind of like um, fussy cutting is like, you guys ever remember that old um, decoupage, right? Where you would, oh my gosh, fussy cut and then glue the layers, glue the layers, glue. It was beautiful, like layer on top of layer on top of layer. It was beautiful. But that's where I learned how to fussy cut many, 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 many years ago. And I don't mind telling you that. I'm proud of my many, many, many years. Okay, so I'm not gonna go too high up into the into the candy cane. And again, I tried to move the paper, not the not the scissors. Just going around. Going around, going around. And then one more little, one more little grab right here. Okay, all right, let's get that out of the way. And then, how does that all look? Looks good. I really wanna come in and clean up that candy cane, but I'll wait. Okay, so I feel like it's all gonna go right like that. So I'm gonna glue these things on here and then I'm gonna do my final ribbon and my final twine. So let's just do that. Um, and I only need just the tiniest little bit. So tiny little bit of glue there, tiny little bit of glue there, uh, tiny little bit of glue there. And then I am gonna dimension all my Cough, my cough, my uh, ah, coffee mug, my cup of cheer. I already bought, oh my gosh, I already bought hot cocoa to give away. I'm so excited. I'm really, really, really getting ready for Christmas. You know, I'm going to set him aside while I do the final. Um, I've got presents. I've got 12 weeks of Christmas getting lined up. I'm so excited about it. I really, really am. I've kind of been in stealth mode. I've been, Leela. Leela. I've been um, well, finally, we got our swaps. I've been making swaps. I couldn't show those. All right. I think I found something it looks a lot like. Okay. Um, we'll look in a minute. Okay. We'll look in a minute. Okay. Oh, I realized I didn't do a great job lining up my tags. Well, that's fine. We're just going to live with it. So, um, tell me the page number and then I'll, uh, I think 25. All right. We'll take a look at it. Hold on. Well, you know what? I'll just, um, just do it this way. I'm going to come up here. Let's see if it bugs me too bad. Yeah, I don't think you're going to notice they're not attached. So I'm going to come up here and tie a tag. Yeah, the Facebook group is called Casing, C-A-S-E hyphen I-N-G Tuesday. And I don't even know if you need to be a demonstrator to be in it. Brenda Quintana runs it. And oh, I think okay. So. I think some other people do. Um, she's the one who posts it all the time, but I think there's another girl, Lori. And oh my gosh, that's where I got my idea today for how to um, for the sketch. So and it ended up working out perfectly. So now I'm going to use a couple of little mini glue dots to kind of get that right there. And pretty much we're almost going to be all done. 
I'm going to look to see where it is in the catalog, too. Thanks for doing that research, Nellie. Well, Nellie. it's Good. close. Yeah, we'll look. All right. So we'll put the, put the ribbon. And I kind of wanted the tag outside of the ribbon. So we'll put that right there tag right there we'll come in and snip the ends nicely and put this guy on oh my gosh i love this card and now i have two of them all right there we go you guys there's our sweet cup of cheer love it very sweet you can see i did a little like there's more light kind of shining on this one and a little less here i did that on purpose i wanted to see the difference i like them both actually so very sweet all righty let's look at page 25 melody well that's not where the i know that's where the um that's not where the sketch is let me look take a minute 48 look at page 48 Okay, let's take a look at 48. Mm, no, that wasn't it either. Although okay. um, page 17 in the annual catalog has a tag layer, the bow and Oh, you know what? It's the annual. So 17, that's the final one. We'll look there. Hold on. It's like okay. a little scavenger hunt. Yeah. 17. Yeah, you know what? I bet it is the annual. I bet it is the annual. Oh, no. You know what? I'll let you guys know. That's kind of cute, though. But yeah. Um, yeah, so that's what casing the catalog, that's what they do. They take, it's pretty similar. They take, yeah. um, just take a sample, and then they make a card from it, and they show you. I'm pretty sure that I saved it on my phone. Oh, here it is. Okay, here it is. It's the holiday catalog, page 13. Okay. So let's, oh, okay. I was... Holiday catalog. That one too. I'll show you. All right. So this. Ooh. So how did we get from this to this? We did it, right? We can see that there's the two tags. There's the circle. There's the colored image. There's the bow. There's the um, twine kind of added to it. Um, and then, yeah, we just. Actually, yeah, I don't even. I don't even remember if she put that DSP there. Maybe she didn't. Um, I was, I kind of get inspiration from everywhere, but pretty close, huh? So, all right, so that's that guy. All righty, well, <laughs> girls, I think that concludes our coloring class for today. Again, those of you that want the kit, I am gonna do three cards, um, and then the kit also includes a pair of blends. And I'll be using these three um, and I can help you get the stamp set. The kit itself will have the three cards. Plus, um, I probably will come back and do a follow up video, not a zoom to show some of the more involved coloring, just because I think it helps to show the involved coloring. But um, anyway, Question, is this part of the 12 weeks? This is not part of 12 weeks, oh. but but you raise a good point no this is doris this this is um i know i talked to you about that the other day i am this is coloring so this is to round out kind of the i've been doing like a technique series about coloring and so peggy this, has this she doesn't have this stamp set but i'm going to work back with her um i will work back with her because okay. um she is getting the technique kit this month and Got so it. i'll, I'll work okay. back to make sure um, that I get her some designs that she can learn from and use. And, and then so, when do the 12 weeks start? The yeah. 12 weeks of Christmas start on September 30. That's a Saturday, right? Yes, I'm flying that day. Yeah, I'm sorry. 12 weeks of Christmas is going to be YouTube only. It's not going to be Zoom. Oh. So the 12 weeks of Christmas, I'll record the video just like I did last year. 
and I'll um, post it every Saturday and then it'll have a PDF. I'm so happy to say a lot of the PDF is written already. And I mean, I'll show you guys. I was trying not to, but I'll show you. Do I have it here? Here's an example from the 12 weeks of Christmas. Um, I may or may not use like that little cup right there. Um, I don't know. I was just playing with it today, but here's an example. This is a pocket. And actually, I wanted to show you guys this pocket anyway. This pocket, for those of you that are doing the Secret Santa swap, um, Carrie and I talked about it. So I'll give you an update about the swap. Here are the rules for the swap, and then I'll come back to this pocket. The swap needs to fit into this size box. This is a small flat rate box. It ships for 1020. It's the Secret Santa swap, and we make five handmade and one like purchase gift for $10, no more than $10. And um, five handmade, one $10 gift ships in this small flat rate right box. So that um, Carrie's gonna be sending out, everybody's invited to that. Everybody, everybody, everybody is invited to that. She's gonna be sending out information about that soon. What I think is fun is this pocket fits inside of here. So, um, I can neither confirm nor deny that when I send it, I will be including this pocket in here. Um, so that's an interesting thing. So you could put like your, your one $10 gift and some handmade things in there. This could be one of the handmade things. Um, so I'm gonna teach everybody how to make this pocket as one of my 12 weeks of Christmas um, things so that if you want to participate in the swap and if you want to do this pocket, you're going to get all that information. But um, but I haven't decided. I think um, I'm, I, I this card stands on its own. Um, but if you wanted to, you could use that same cup of cheer right there. But um, <laughs> but. I'm not, I am not done designing 12 weeks of Christmas yet. This is just a little hint of one of the weeks. And cool. um, there you have it. So I know that was a lot of information, Doris, but you um, triggered me to, you sparked me to think of some other things I wanted to cover. So um, hopefully that helped answer it. Yes, it yes. did. Thank you. Oh, yay. All right. And Cindy, there's still room. I told you I can't control creativity. I just really, you got me so excited to color with this set that I colored I'm with this. I'm glad because there's, I'm, I'm in a place right now. So I'm glad you, you did. We're, we're good. All right. But I promise you whatever come, whatever, I promise any extra thing will be used. I promise. I promise. But um, you don't, yeah. You don't have to promise. Please don't do that. That's it's no biggie so sweet all right so girls i think that kind of um concludes today unless there's no other i'll stop recording i'll come back to you guys